Hey, what's up? I just want to go over some quick stuff on kind of leaning towards object oriented purity stuff. Object oriented purity stuff. Sorry about that. Sometimes I don't pronounce my words right, and then my uh, noise compression thing for the recording software just doubles down and makes it twice as bad. But anyway, this is about how to just make like simple objects and compose them together a little bit and make them do things and make your software easy to read and easy to extend. That's the two main focuses right now is readability and extendability or extensibility, however the proper way to say that is. So this is Yegor Ugayenko, I think if you pronounce his name right. He does. He's one of the few people I know of that's always trying to progress this whole like object oriented purity discussion kind of thing and he still seems like he's doesn't quite have his mind totally wrapped around it but at the same time like I've mentioned in another video of mine I don't feel like I would have my mind wrapped around it as good as I do if it wasn't for people like him and David West and stuff like that but anyway um uh, so I was watching his one of his recent videos about this thing he's discussing temperature, this temperature class right here, and when I was watching it, I could notice that he was kind of like having a little bit of trouble with it, and I could totally relate because when I sit down and try and to do these kind of videos, you can take a simple example like this, like a simple temperature class or something or object, more likely better way to say it, um, and then you just end up in this weird like pickle of trying to describe things and something a concept that seems so easy at first or like it's just it's a trip and what it's really is is it's about describing simplicity that's what it is at the end of the day so uh anyway when i was watching him i thought like oh man i could totally see where he's trying to go with this like i feel like i can see the the goal post better than even he can and so I thought, okay, well, I saved a couple screen snips and everything and thought, okay, I'll go and do a little video about it and everything. And then I sat down, but I didn't hit record yet. And I started dinking with it. And I was like, wow. And next thing you know, for like the past hour or two, I've been sitting here kicking this around, kicking this idea around and like, how am I going to present it and all this kind of stuff, you know, to just keep it simple. Because when you're dealing with object-oriented programming, you can model like everything in the real world and every conceptual thought you have about everything in the real world right so it, that basically means that there's an infinite possible amount of possible ways to model things and another thing is the if you've watched any of my previous videos thanks for watching them and there's going to be some overlap I'll, I'll always be describing things um you know i'll say the same things over and over so i'll just apologize for that up front but we need several exposures to the same idea to sort of help lock them in and everything anyway. But uh, we're not trying to model the entire real world. That's the first thing with object-oriented prog programming to make sure we understand is like, do not sit down and try and model everything. You know, don't think about, I'm not even going to use any examples. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but okay, I'll just say with this temperature, you know, don't sit down and model everything about temperature that you ever you know don't go to the wikipedia page and copy every single property and behavior about temperature and try and do that just take the things you need just take just stick to the concepts in your own human head applying to the problem and solution domain that you're in and just do what you need to do and if we construct it right if we architect it right then we should be able to go back at any time and extend. That's where I'm talking about that extensibility is being able to extend this object, like the temperature object, to do whatever we might want it to do in the future. You know, if we don't care about degrees Kelvin today, but we might tomorrow, who cares? We don't, we don't need to mess with that right now. But if we leave it open for that extension, then we can always do that in the future. So one of the things he talked about, like here's the class, right, is up here's the temperature class and he just put these um the method set and get as bad examples he was he admitted that these were bad examples and what we're really doing is we're we're just using temperature as a bag of data you know we're using it as like a little struct or something like that 
and you can see right here is a little degrees property and everything so it's like you have the choice of like whether you not you want to go in and try and access this property directly from outside or uh, whether or not you want to call one of these public functions right here to uh, to access it and ideally you want to call the the methods you know with object oriented programming you want to stick to behaviors stop thinking about properties like if I want to know something about you as an entity if I want to know how you feel I ask you how do you feel I don't reach my cut a hole in you and reach my hand in and start squeezing your liver and going oh okay let me check the state of your liver and see like you know I could do that a surgeon could do that or somebody could do that right but that makes them an expert about you if you know if I if I have this knowledge of a surgeon to determine how you're doing I now know too much about you you know we're too coupled in that sense I think that doesn't feel like the exact right word to describe it but uh we're you know what I mean it you should be one of the most important properties of object oriented programming is that you're your own information expert like each entity is for the most part is its own information expert there's some trade-offs to that like if you have an x and y coordinate um just gonna do a quick side bust right here and say if like should you know where you're at in the world or the universe or should the universe know where you're at within itself you know which if I have a universe and human which one should have the XY coordinates of the human stored in its object and the answer to that is it depends that that's a, de a design decision that you'd have to make um, normally you'd want to lean towards the entity that you're talking about is the information expert so if you're on the fence about it you'd say the human is to know their XY coordinates but if it's a circumstance where there could be circumstances where it's more efficient for the world to know where you're at instead of you like oh man I thought of a good example of that but I'll I'll leave that for now that's just a little side bust to say that you know there's a different situations of whether or not you uh, want to know it's sort of like a perspective it's it comes back to you know we're talking about real world modeling but but when we actually do that modeling in the software we need to think about our concept of it that abstract concept one of the things I was thinking the other day was about a food cart and it's like if you want to know if I'm near that food cart never mind actually I can't describe it that good right now so back off the side bust onto the main topic again so that being said everything should lean towards the entity itself being the information expert unless there's a good reason for otherwise and get kept to a very minimal if there's a reason for otherwise so anyway he has the temperature thing which I think he thought it was a bad example somebody called him out and said it was a bad example I think it's an excellent example it's one of the most excellent examples um, they were leaning towards they thought it was too primitive like that an object that that bet should just be a primitive and in pure object oriented programming in readable extendable object oriented programming no it should not be a primitive it should be an object nearly everything should be an object in pure object oriented programming I mean it, it technically if it's 100% pure everything would be an object and languages like Python under the hood everything is an object but then they treat a lot of it like primitives on the surface it's not the best implementation but anyway um, so right here we have temperature this is instantiating the temperature and then initializing it to a value right there and that's pretty self-explanatory that's kind of like to be accepted this is just all example code it's not real world or anything and then right here is um, it's printing it printing it it's saying water will start boiling in so many degrees it's supposedly figuring out like a delta for the point of the water to boil and what he was bringing up is that this isn't good when you're doing when you've got you've got the guts hanging out right here so to speak you know what I mean so like I was talking about so this was kind of like 
what he was getting at is what can you do here and then here was some bad example or you know not necessarily bad but just some examples of trying to use water or oh, excuse me temperature for something and then I'll just go ahead and close this one out so then he started improving on it a little bit and came down here oops and did some uh, object oriented style this don't take this as like anything solid at all he was just typing you know just being really general like not even thinking it all the way out and everything but just trying to get away from having those guts hanging out and right here he thought about you know maybe pulling in some decorators and stuff and otherwise we still have the same object up here and um, you know that same stuff down there too so anyway it all comes down to what I want to talk about is this temperature and go from there so I'm gonna close that out too just want to introduce that so when I'm thinking about objects I like I said I go and think about the real world a lot of people even people I consider close to pretty much experts or you know definitely considered by most people as experts on the subject like Bob Martin and stuff will say no you can't model the real world I say BS do it you know don't well, like I said don't go out and model everything in the real world but when you have a question about something I'll go to Wiktionary and I'll look it up like I did with temperature it's like what is temperature is that is it what I think it is you know let me make sure that I have my terms nailed down and screws tightened on them and everything so the primary definition of a temperature is a measure of cold or heat you know that's what a temperature is first and foremost and really only if you want to think about it at least in the sense that we care about it it's like yeah there's other definitions but we don't care about those if we do in the future then maybe we can use them or whatever but all we care about is a measure of cold or heat so it's sort of a component if you think about it you know like you're, what are you measuring? There's a what there. You know, a, a temperature is adding additional information to some existing entity. Like you could have air temperature, you could have water temperature, you could have your personal body temperature, things like that, right? So, and having something, that's where we get to like when you've heard about probably has a and is a kind of relationships with uh, object oriented composition and stuff we would have a temperature right we're not we're not we aren't a temperature but we have a temperature so that right there is telling us a lot that it's a component it's a uh, you know that's where the word composition itself that comp component comp component you know what I mean if you break down the etymology on the words that's exactly we're composed of components so anyway, that's just to sort of make that, solidify that uh, concept for us so that we can agree on the terminology there. So I thought, what about water? Water has a, well, first of all, there's water, just plain old water out there, right? We don't, we kind of just have this general little flash in our mind, right? When we think about water or whatever, and then we add a component to it and that component is a temperature so this is all we care about about water so far we don't even care what color it is or anything all we care about is the water temperature so far and that temper that's the temperature object that we just looked at all those gory details on um, at first my plan was to just focus on temperature itself right but I thought after I started working out this example and everything I thought you know what temperature and objects themselves are supposed to be a black box so what if we talk about this temperature without ever looking at any internal details on it because we shouldn't have to so that's what I ended up doing because I was chasing my tail with this whole working out these examples and stuff like this so but I feel I feel pretty good about this and the way it would go so if we want to know if the water is boiling then that is a situation where we care about the temperature right maybe I should back that up one before I put all that on the screen so we want to know when the water is boiling so instead of asking well this example kind of shows that 
So this is a method, you know, this diamond represents that it's com composed of a temperature object. So this, this is an object within an object, basically. This is your water object, and this is your temperature object inside of your water object. It's just a component, you know. And then this is a, a public method, is boiling, that you would call on water. It's not on temperature, right? It's on water. And so you'd say like water dot is boiling and then it would come in here and run this code and it would say if temperature dot degrees Celsius is effectively what that stands for is greater than or equal to a boiling point that we have defined up here or somewhere else, you know, just some constant boiling point like 212 or whatever, then return true and otherwise return false. I think that's pretty self-explanatory for anybody who has a basic understanding of programming in general and uh that seems cool i think right um is there anything wrong with that and the answer is of course yes there's lots of stuff wrong with this it works it's i you don't have to beat yourself up for using it as your first implementation of is boiling that's fine because you're already off to a good start by having this is boiling method instead of um, you know, a boiling property on its own. It's just boiling true or false or something like that. It's it's actual behavior. You're asking the water if it's boiling instead of sticking your finger in there to find out. So that, you know, give yourself credit where it's due on that one. So you can change this implementation under here. And either way, so far, we're just, I'm not going to go full on crazy abstract object oriented programming right now. And I don't even feel like I really could. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it into that pure zone. Or at least into the zone of uh, that, like I said, readability and being able to extend the interface and the features. So if temperature degrees Celsius is greater than or equal to boiling point, that's pretty readable too. If you think about it, it's really readable. Like that, I think it reads nice like that. But the thing is, is when you start talking about change, degrees Celsius, what if you want degrees Fahrenheit for some reason? You know, this example doesn't really illustrate or like demonstrate any sort of reason you might want that to change. But what if you did? What if this was being used, you know, in some other way or something? This, we just need to just know that I'm sure you can imagine if you've done any moderate to heavy programming that this would, uh, there's a lot of reasons why you would want that to change, you know, and especially if it was used somewhere else. Maybe you never wanted to change in this function and that's fine. But, uh, and then also this boiling point. So to really, to answer that question of that things might want to change, even in this context, actually, I can go over to this Wikipedia page because once again, like I said, go in and read the precise definitions of stuff. That will tell you because that's the real world. That's what you're modeling very select little pieces of. And it says that water boils and vapor condenses at 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. So yeah, you might want it in Fahrenheit or you might want it in Celsius. However, even below the boiling point, water can change to vapor at its surface by evaporation. So it's like, whoa, okay, there's, I mean, technically this whole part of this page is all about phase transitions on water, which is basically like state transitions. So it's like, what, there, there's all these different things. I don't understand all these physics, you know what I mean? Maybe I might like, I don't know, maybe the my customer or whatever might tell me some information about what they're doing with this software that I'm maybe making for their smartphone or something that they're going out and doing some geological stuff with. And um, they might come back to me and be like, hey, you know, it's off to a good start or whatever, but it'd be really nice if, you know, it could detect my altitude and change the the boiling point depending on the altitude. And it's like, oh, wow, really? I was kind of worried you might say something like that because especially when you come down here, like, it says one atmosphere up here, and that's talking about sea level. So you come down here, the boiling point of uh, water is only 212 at sea level. So 
everything changes. You know, there's even a thing in here where it says, in a vacuum, water can boil at room temperature. So there's all these crazy exceptions that can happen and stuff. So if we bounce back over to our example, we see that, um, you know, this boiling point, this constant is obviously not a constant anymore. That's the first, one of the first big glaring things. And then this other thing, of course, it could be degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, we could assume that both of these are methods now. Like, okay, we realize we need to make a method. So that's getting better if they were methods, right? Because then, then we know we can put some variance behind them and go, okay, boiling point could depend on an altitude and stuff like that. But then it's like, shoot. So now boiling point always has to return degrees Celsius, right? Because I'm comparing it to degrees Celsius. So it's like, well, what about when they want, um, they were wanting, they're going to use it in another country too with some other people and they're way more comfortable with degrees Fahrenheit for some other stuff too. And I don't know, for whatever reasons, you know, of course I'm not painting the perfect picture, but they um, use your imagination, right? Because... Anyway, um, so there's all those types of things that could happen, you know. So basically what I'm saying is, like, to use your imagination, you just have to block out this is boiling part and pretend like this code's being used maybe somewhere else. And it's just, it's not general and universal and all this stuff, and there's all these ifs, ands, or buts. And so finally to get to the next little slide here, here's the alternate is boiling implementation. It's leaning a lot more object-oriented purity, but it, you don't even need an object-oriented language per se to even implement it this much better right here. This is just pushing the stuff into functions like, like we talked about. But I got rid of this operator here too because these operators are they're kind of bad in object-oriented programming. I mean, you can use them and stuff, but really it should be like this, like is above. Um, so if if temperature is above boiling point, so now how how good does that read? You know what I mean? Everything's generalized. If temperature is above boiling point, there's no more like it doesn't matter what degrees it is, it doesn't matter what altitude it is, it doesn't matter anything right now. It just all that matters is that the temperature is above boiling point. So now this method this re-implementation of this method and otherwise it you know it all that changed really is this part right here this this business end of the stick right there that's all that changed and this little simple structure stayed the same otherwise like if so then return true else return false so the program that you know or the other object or whatever you want to think of it as it's using is boiling that's fine you know we did a good start right there so it's still gonna you know the interface for that method hasn't changed, that's good. And then right here though, we've eliminated any reason for this to ever change again in the future. The only thing I would do is I would say is at or above, I'd refactor this name and just say is at or above instead of is above. When I was first thinking of it, I was like, oh, I should do that, but that's too long. So I went ahead and named it is above. But then five minutes later, I was like, you know what? I, I should have named that is at or above. And that's it. And that's typical with like, refactoring names and whatnot. So five minutes later, this had no reason to change because is temperature, or excuse me, if temperature is above boiling point, end of story. That's all behavior. There's no operators comparing like any sort of fixed values or anything like that. So if boiling point changes, none of it matters at all. What we do here is we can have boiling point return an object. And that's where we're, now we're getting into the object-oriented purity for real, because by returning that object, because you might be thinking, uh, is above what, you know, where is this concrete sort of, value? like at some point we've got to simplify or reduce or whatever you want to think of it as, everything down to like something real world, right? You know, we're we're applying our conceptual idea, which this sentence represents our conceptual idea and generalizes it in the programming sense, but where's that tangible like Fahrenheit value or whatever? 
and this is the object that it would return here is this boiling point an instance of this boiling point object and you can see it has methods on it that's in degrees celsius in degrees fahrenheit in degrees kelvin and it could be in degrees whatever you know whatever you want you can make up your own unit and add it to it now or wait and add it in the future it doesn't matter and it also has this altitude um, method on it as well at altitude and then whatever distance I'm just saying off of, I'm trying to keep things pretty simple and abstract which is good to do in general but this is I'm assuming it's off of uh, sea level is what I'm going by there and then that's going to return an object which I'll get to in a minute so now what we've got going on let me see if I got the order of this right so boiling point is returning an instance of this object when we this is sort of like a you could just think of it like a factory method right it's going to return this and then what effectively happens is since that boiling point gets returned right here with all these values filled in um, then this is above is going to be effectively you know you you could think of it like it's chained and it's boiling point returning this object at altitude 300 which is coming in here and setting the altitude to 300 internally we don't know what state that's changing maybe there probably is an altitude variable that gets hard or set at 300 right you know I didn't pit feet or meters or anything like that and I'm just simplifying for now but if you take these ideas wrap your mind about them around them a little better and then you can think of how you can factor those kinds of things into the into the example and in this same fashion and make them work so altitude 300 it's probably storing that in there and then it immediately returns an object which is it in the situation what I'm doing right here I just make it return itself and ideally in object oriented programming as much as possible you want to return itself or another object sometimes but uh, these unless it's like a terminal situation you don't want to return these types of primitives really okay so it returns itself right here so we're still we still have a boiling point object right here and then finally it calls in degrees celsius 